Hi everyone, Scrappy Kathy here with you on International Scrapbooking Day. And I've had a couple um, creative team posts out uh, earlier today, but right now I'm going to do this one for my today's load prompt. And I'm using a special kit that I did for a challenge over at Rediscover Your Stash to build a small kit and the specifications were given. And then you get a point for sharing your kit and also for sharing the pages you make. So I'm using that kit, although I will admit this stencil was not part of the kit, but this paper was. It's a uh, paper from, let's see, it's Fancy Pants Collecting Moments, and it's from 2013. We were supposed to pick five papers from that were older than 10 years old. So this one's right at 10 years old. And I hate giving up, normally I would hate giving up the rulers, but none of these are in colors that I would typically use. I might use the dark navy or black one, and I might use the orange one, and I might have used the lime green, but I think I'm going to use instead the kind of vintage -y looking uh, grid a design that's on the back. And let me get, let me pull up the sketch. I'm using one of um, Christy's Beautiful Life sketches that she shared on uh, Instagram, and it's this one that's a relatively simple uh, a circle with some embellishments here. I'm not cutting my photo in a circle. It's square, and so I'm going to include it in the cluster, but I'm going to make a circle, which is what I'm doing here, and I don't know that I'll do a frame. I suppose I could do... You know, I think I'm going to do a frame. I might actually use this frame, but I may cut this paper down. And let me do that, actually. I'm going to cut. Uh, let's see. I'm going to cut a half inch off this side. And a half inch down here. That takes away some of the um, kind of distressed look that was on the edges, but I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna put it back in my scrap backwards kit and we'll see how that works out. So now I'm going to cut the branding strip off of this. The reason that this is actually appropriate is because I'm doing a photo that was taken where we're all dressed in our Houston Astros gear. And, you know, the Astros kind of about this is uh, from this frame is of the the night sky is from Marigold, my crepe paper. So now I will put those away. And I'm going to, I'll put this in the frame or on the frame uh, when I get done making the circle. And let me see, I think this is the bottom, and I need to put it this way now or else I will forget because I'm building my cluster down here and I kind of want it. Is that right? I kind of like the idea that it's a little bit weighted over this way and I cut it that way. So I'll do the cluster down here. <laughs> sorry, sorry for all of that. I'm going to start with my darkest here, three colors of orange, ripe persimmon, carved pumpkin, and spiced marmalade. I'm going to start with the ripe persimmon in the center and then blend in to the other. I'm going to kind of let it 
bleed up into there and I'm doing this because the Astros uh, jerseys we were wearing were heavy into the color orange and I'm using blue elsewhere on the page, creating some contrast there. Let's see. I'm gonna do the carved pumpkin next because it has the most reddishness in it. Kind of go and I this stencil is um, I'll tell you in a minute there's a number and a name on it but I have it upside down so I can't read it I missed out on that that lesson at school the whole reading upside down and backwards lesson <laughs> Okay, and the oranges really don't read too differently as they go along. But when I take it off, I think the uh, some of the gradations will show. I'm not seeing them now. If I take a, a little bit lighter hand on this, this one will look lighter. And I kind of like what I'm seeing there. I'm going to actually kind of go a little heavier in that center, even though it's with this lighter color. It kind of brightens that up a bit. Okay, so let me put that aside. I'll put my... So here's the big reveal. Oh, I like the, I like the look. I love that ink blended look, or that blended ink look, however you're supposed to say it. So now, oops, I've gotten some orangey fingers over here on the paper that can Okay, so let's, I'm just going to put a little bit of tape here, and if I feel like I need more, I can do that. It's easier to place this. It's not going to have a huge border around it, but I think you can kind of see a little bit of the the sky. You can see some of the stars. So here's my photo, and this is the frame. I'm going to kind of just put all my embellishments kind of over here in this cluster, and I need some foam behind here to kind of build it up so that I can rest it on the frame. And I'm going to need two slices of foam. I want to get, I have a little bit of foam here. I cut this frame piece from the back of one of the, um, cardstocks the the kit was to be built with uh, five older than ten, five sheets older than 10 years and uh, a more modern uh, collection five sheets from a more modern collection so I pulled my modern my modern collection being represented here is um, vintage artistry everywhere a travel line and so I'm going to put this here actually I might put it up here 
so that my embellishment clusters can be around here without being driven off the page. Okay, so given that, I will put my, I always put things further down than I think. I, it's hard to explain that, but That's gonna go. I kind of want it at the same angle. I usually don't do that, but if I wanted to differ the angles, I should have put this wonky. But we'll we're gonna live with it as it is. I have uh, from that same sheet. I fussy cut these two tickets and I'm gonna put them right there as I usually do with tickets where I want to maintain the angle that they're skewed at. See this was the back side of the um, package, the paper pack label. Okay, there, and I have this, which I'm going to use. I, I want to put this sunflower here. I don't want the stem, so I'm going to fussy cut it. This is from a piece of ephemera from my good friend Di down under and she sent it all the way to to me when she heard me say that I use um, I'm gonna do a piece of foam under there I, I use I'm too high over on this side and let me kind of do this. I'm a little bit, I'm rushing this a little bit, and I don't really have any particular reason uh, for that. Let me maybe put some liquid adhesive there. Okay, that works better. I'm going to tuck that in, but I'm using a die that I I'm, I'm going to cover this kind of not so attractive ceiling with this that could also look like a title. Um, might be the title. And there was a, a more um, carefully posed version of this photo. And then Barrett reached over to make fun of, of James in some, in some fashion. And he, it, it she, and, and Ava put a, a, her hand over her mouth and, and Katie made a silly face. So I love that those, that moment was captured. And I've got these, they're, I'm just going to use a couple of them. I fussy cut these out of a scrap that was in my, um, in my kit that I built. Let me do this. It's got, um,
it was uh, the scrap was actually uh, a text, a paper with text all over it. So I thought that would be cute on leaves. I'm going to tuck that under, and then I'm going to go on top with the sunflower. I'm just going to go ahead and put it over. I wasn't going to layer it over. I've got this, which says our favorite place. And I thought I might somehow tie that in with this blue flare. Although I'm thinking that I'd prefer the blue flare under the sunflower kind of partially hidden. There we go. Okay. And I have I have this strong desire to balance this cluster with something up here. And I think I'll do that. I think this goes this way. So I will do that. Um, I know that's different from the sketch. The sketch but the sketch also assumed you were going to have your photo there. So I'm going to um, do a not-so-true-to-life version that was clearly... And I'm using sunflowers because that's kind of my, um, my way of indicating that John was there with us. I've got this yellow kind of film strippy sort of thing that I wanted to put in here because it's it it accents the blue nicely. Let me see if I can get my tweezers and coax that in under the photo. You can still see the blue through the sprocket holes. And it adds in the yellow that's in the Astros jerseys. And now I'm going to put this favorite place thing up here. And I'm looking at that thinking I need another blue flare. Let's see if I can find, how about this one with the plus signs? It's not the right, it's not the exact color, but it might work. How about this one with the XOXO? I like that. I ought to have picked one that would bring in that color, but I'm okay letting that be, quote unquote, an accent. And the load prompt was to scrap about something that is a pet peeve and or, or something that makes you grouchy 
and this is actually an example of something that but I don't think that's the right color of something that I I like it it's it could be a pet peeve that just when you get a good um, a good pose, they go off book and 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 do something silly. But it's the silliness that I like. And then the other part of the prompt, the technique part of the prompt, was to use something metal or metallic. And so I have a small. Brad, a metal brad that I think I'm going to put right here. It has the number one on it. I'm going to punch a hole with my weeder tool. Stick that in right there. And do that. And it's Closer than I wanted it to be to the flare, but that's all right. Now, I wanted to put some, oh, I also have, uh, I, we were to pick a set of older rub-ons, and these are the oldest rub-ons I have. I don't, they probably go back to the 50s or something, I don't know. There, um, there's a B, and there's a, a ladybug, and I use bees on pages about Barrett, and ladybugs on pages about Katie Bug, and baby squirrels on pages that have Ava. So I, there are no squirrels on the in these rub-ons. So. I'll put those away later. You don't have to watch me do that. And now I'm going to put, I'm maybe going to arrange the animals up here. Or do I want them down here? I could do this one right here. And, and it's, it's up there close to Katie Bug or cl close to Baby Squirrel, Ava. And that would have been enough to satisfy the metallic part. That, um, and I'm going to do this B right here. And I'm going to see if I can rub it off with the back end of my tweezers. I think that might get the details a little bit better. I saw someone else doing that the other day and thought, ah, I'm gonna try that. Not, it's not sticking and I think that's not because of the tweezers, that's because it's old. Been around for a while, whoops. Okay, and that works. And Katie Bug is right there and I don't think I can get very close to her, so I'm gonna put her maybe here or right next to her brother. I'm gonna put her, I don't want them just lined up, you know what I'm saying? I kinda wanna do this. I don't know that that's that makes much difference in the grand scheme of things, but okay, these little tiny uh, appendages <laughs> are hard to get to stick and not come up. Okay, well, there's 
I lost a little bit of one there, but it's not terrible. And I'm gonna do a few sequins. Kind of down this edge and I'll do a few around this our favorite place little tag label whatever it is we're calling that And I'm actually, I normally don't care, but I'm actually gonna try to work on that to get that um, erased. And I'm using Rutatia, which is a new pack of sequins that I just received from Spiegel Mom Scraps. And I love them. I love orange and there's not I, I, there were a few mixes that had orange, and there was a great set called Mango Tango that had some oranges in it. This has a really pretty metallic orange that I really love, and it's got... It's amazing how those mixes uh, work. They're, when you look at it in the bag, to me it looks very orange, but you lose some of the, um, the variations in shades, and there's a very kind of pinkish orange that I love may not be the absolute best orange for this particular page, but I think it's close enough. See, it's that one. And then we have, there are some kind of off-white ones in there. And there's a solid. There's also one I haven't gotten in there. And it's a kind of coppery or bronze metallic. And it's beautiful. And then I'll look at this and see if there's anything I think is missing. I have quite a few of those bronze ones around there and I have none here, so I'm gonna put one right there just to balance. Not necessary, but it makes me feel better. <laughs> okay, and I'm not, okay, let me pick up a couple more. Let's put that one there. Whoops, and I picked up a couple, all right, but they were in the same bit. The same, you know, they were to get one on top of each other is what I'm trying to say. I'll put that one down there. Okay, and I think I'm done. I'm looking to see if I need anything else, and I think not. Um, I will add some journaling down here. We were at the game to celebrate John's birthday. It was something we always did with, you know, his birthday was during baseball season, so it was easy to pick that as a, as an activity to celebrate. So he and I did it when we were living alone, and then when we moved 
here next to the kids, the whole family started going. And we've been going since 2008 to Astros or uh, Braves games and, because we moved to Atlanta. <laughs> and um, this year, the uh, on his birthday weekend, uh, the Braves happened to be playing the Astros. So we called it an Astros game and, and went there. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow for another load page. And it's going to be, I'm going to wait until tomorrow morning to do the load page um, using the uh, scrap lift from uh, Scrap Squad for my Scrap Squad Sunday series. And I'm going to use the same kit I built for Rediscover Your Stash. So thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.